I'm reckoning you're here for the same reason I am. Talk about hot penny stocks? Yeah, cool, man. One of my favorite discussions. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And today is Tuesday, July 23rd. So we're going to do what we always do. We're going to focus in on a hot penny stock that I came across through the day as I was trading penny stocks. That's what I do every day. I trade stocks under five bucks and there's no shortage of them. They're on every single market. But I'm looking for a hot penny stock, a stock that has potential to make us money. And most of the time I do that research looking at the charts because you can look at a lot of charts in a little amount of time. And time is relevant as a day trader. You don't want to spend a lot of it reading, reading, reading. So I scan my charts looking for charts that have heat, looking for charts that look like they're ready to run. You look at enough charts, you can tell one that's looking to run. You know, it's got a breakout setup or it's been bouncing uphill or it's been going to the moon. Whatever it is, you find a chart that looks hot to you. Take the time to go through that company's press releases and filings. Go back up to a month if you need. Look for some hot news, a catalyst. If you can find a hot piece of information to match that hot chart, even if it's stale, even if it's a little old, it can get that chart moving you've got yourself a hot penny stock to consider. And I've got one to share with you today. We are over here at the otcmarkets.com website doing my research and due diligence. I check all my stocks out here. It is primarily for the OTC markets, but they carry every stock on the market. It's not perfect. They've got gaps in information, but it's a great place to start. So today we are looking at Sharps Technology, ticker STSS. Maybe you're familiar with this company. She filled a dire need for the country last May when the FDA came out with a bunch of announcements about leaving Chinese plastic syringes alone. This company was into that business, but nobody was paying attention to them until that came out. And then she exploded. She jumped from like 17 cents all the way up to 85 cents. You're talking 500% run. Coming down and bouncing again, 300%, but she has come all the way back down. All the way, we're down here at 21 cents now. But she's landed on a very strong support, and we've got a very big catalyst now because of everything that's happened since mid-May. And I'm going to share that all with you right now. STSS, she finished today almost at 21 cents, and she was up just a little more than 1% today. This is a penny stock on the major exchange, which means there's no transaction fees when you buy or sell your shares. You can trade a pre-market, after-market. Look into that. Lots of opportunities. Plus, there's a lot more money and a lot more volume up on the major exchange. That just makes trading more fun, if not more profitable. And there's a lot more rules up there, folks, which is the real reason I like to trade penny stocks on the major exchange. I'm tired of getting burned by their antics down on the OTC. I'm not saying I don't trade OTC. I just prefer the major exchange ones. So what is STSS about? Well, they tell us over here that Sharps Technology is an innovative medical device and pharmaceutical packaging company offering patented best-in-class smart safety syringe products to the healthcare industry. The company's product lines focus on providing ultra-low-waste low capabilities that incorporate syringe technologies that use both passive and active safety features. Sharps also offers products that are designed with specialized co-polymer technology to support the pre-fillable syringe market so they can pre-fill these with specified doses of medication so people can buy them already filled for them. The company has a manufacturing facility in Hungary and has just recently partnered with Nephron Pharmaceuticals to expand its manufacturing capacity in the U.S. And we're going to focus in on that here in just a minute. Now, as I said, this all began back in May. The FDA came out with alerts warnings and ultimately recalls for these plastic syringes made in China. The FDA continues to evaluate other Chinese made plastic syringes and recommends not using them if possible. Well, when you look at the chart, May 17th is when this came out. It was the first time they had brought this subject to the table. There was a spark in the chart, not major, but you can see there was at least somebody listening. <laughs> 
Then on the 19th, it became a warning. You see on the chart, it got a little more excited. And then by the 24th, it was a full-fledged recall, not just with one company, but now with four Chinese manufacturers. Now, I don't know how many syringes that was, but obviously it was a lot because as soon as this came out, she exploded. This came out on the 24th, 24th, 25th, 6th, 28th. Oh my God, we were getting huge bounces up and down and business started to erupt for them. The news tells us the story. Now, keep in mind, this is after the first quarter has ended and the second quarter is beginning and we're just coming to the end of that now. Now, I'm going to tell you right up front, this company has no revenues. They have nothing on the books. This is huge because financials come out mid-August. And since they've had nothing up to now, their first financial with revenues is the next one. And how much money are we talking about? Let's take a look at the news and see if we can figure this out. Sharps Technology is positioned to address supply chain disruptions resulting from recent FDA recalls warnings and tariffs on Chinese manufactured syringes. That came out on the 28th. Now, we've got three other pieces of news here that came out up to the 31st, and they're multiple deals all wrapped up into one company. And I'm just gonna dive into this piece of news that explains it all. Sharps Technologies SC Asset Purchase and their $200 million syringe sales agreement paves the way to begin producing pre-fillable specialty co-polymer syringes in the U.S. Now, these are the three bullet points we're looking at. Sharp's CEO issues a letter to shareholders with details about the Inject Easy acquisition, establishing Sharp's position in the pre-fillable syringe industry in the U.S. They signed a syringe sales agreement which will secure product orders totaling over $200 million for the first five years of operation. Now, I don't know how much they're getting up front, but that has started. Sharps is negotiating additional pharma segment purchase commitments for orders over the next three years, with shipments expected to begin by Q2 of 2025. So they are looking at business in the future, but we're looking at business right now as well. Now, this did happen May 31st, 2024. Earlier this week, Sharps Technology signed an enhanced asset purchase agreement with Nephron Pharmaceuticals to acquire the Inject Easy specialty syringe manufacturing assets in West Columbia, South Carolina. They've got facilities in Hungary, haven't been doing a whole lot. Now they're buying a facility to work these syringes right here in the United States. We also signed an accompanying five-year, $200 million syringe sales agreement with the same company. So Nephron is selling them the facilities to make these syringes here in the United States, and then they put in an order to buy $200 million worth of them. You gotta love this. Through these agreements, they are expected to close in about 60 days. Well, if this came out May 31st, that would put it at uh, July 21st, right now, this week. So it's due right now for this deal to close. And our financials are just about three weeks away. They go on to tell us that Sharps will become the first fully dedicated, specialized polymer prefillable syringe manufacturing plant in North America. The facility will be on track to begin product deliveries in the second quarter of 2025, and we expect that our projected revenue should exceed $35 million the first 12 months of sales. So that's a projection for next year. But keep in mind, they're in business now because they have a facility in Hungary. They're just trying to make it easier for themselves by getting a facility here in the U.S., the acquisition's price is $35 million, and there will be an assumption of certain related liabilities of about $4 million. They go on to tell us that they are currently involved in meaningful negotiations with a new customer who is a prominent American-based multinational pharma company focusing on treatments for both acute and chronic diseases with multiple major retail pharmacy chains and several Fortune 500 healthcare supply distributors. 
that could be a huge contract, whoever that is. And this company is filling the gap right now for the U.S. They go on to tell us of another deal here in June on the 13th. Sharps Technology Reserves receives $30 million purchase order for pre-fillable cold polymer syringes to be manufactured at the SC facility. Hopefully they're getting a down payment on that. On the 17th, four days later, Sharps Technology ships first orders for Secure Guard disposable smart safety syringes to strategic distributor partner in Columbia. This one is not Columbia, South Carolina. This is Columbia, the Latin American company, or country. That's where they're now sending them, over to Latin America, where they're going to start getting orders. That's another huge market over there. Then here in July, Sharps Technology receives purchase order for 1 million Secure Guard syringes for 2024 delivery. And the last piece of news came out on the 9th. The company's CEO urges shareholders to vote in support of three proposals by July 12th voting deadline. Well, this has already happened, and it really isn't good news, folks, but I see it as being good for us. So they voted on three proposals. None of them are really great, and they were all approved. Stockholders approved to increase the authorized shares from $100 million to $500 million. Now, that's not all bad. This is the most amount of shares they own. And they can put them on the market and sell them to us and increase that float to a huge number. Or they could use them as currency to make deals with other companies. They can even pay themselves with them. So it gives them more flexibility, having more AS, more authorized shares. Stockholders also approved in one or more non-public offerings where the maximum discount will not exceed 20% below market price. So we've authorized the company to have private offerings, not to us, to other investors, where they will sell the shares no more than 20% less than what we're paying. So if we're paying a dollar that day, whoever they sell them to, they're going to get them for 80 cents. They're going to make some money doing that. A wee bit of dilution on our back, hopefully not too much. Then we have the big one here. Stockholders approved that the board of directors have discretion at any time within a year to affect a reverse stock split of up to one and eight. One share will be given to us for every eight shares you own. They'll adjust the price so you have paid the same amount for the shares you have, which means your average price per share is way up now. Now, they say they can do this anytime they want in a year. And they don't have to put out a press release or another filing saying they're going to do it. They can just do it. So one night you go to bed, you've got this many shares. The next morning you wake up and it's like, where'd all my shares go? They had that reverse stock split. Now, we don't know how much it's going to be. It could be up to one in eight. Now, my feelings are it's going to happen real soon because they were contacted by the NASDAQ about their price. It is under a dollar. They're at 20 cents. They've been under a dollar for a long time. If you're under a dollar for too long on the major exchange, you get a warning to fix it in six months. How do you fix it? We, the investors, have to bid it up over a dollar, close over a dollar, 10 consecutive days. We do that, the company's out of hot water. If we fail to do that, well, then they either get kicked down to the OTC or they have to do a reverse stock split to lift the price. Well, they had been given six months. Their six months ended July 8th. They had up until July 16th to appeal it. They said they were going to appeal it. Well, today is the 23rd. I don't see any appeal in. I don't think they appealed this. So we're either going down to the OTC or they have to do a reverse stock split. If they did a full boat, one in eight, at 20 cents, we'd take it up to what? A dollar sixty. A dollar sixty is where they'd kick the price up and you'd have one eighth of the amount of shares that you have now. I'm pretty sure this is gonna happen, folks. So why do I think this is good? Well, all of these things they voted on tell us where we're at now. They got their authorized shares. They're going to get their reverse stock split. And they have some sales where they're going to make some money. They've gotten approval. They can work their plan right now. And the chart has fallen down to a very strong support 
where it looks like a strong foundation. And now that we know where we are, we can move forward. And I think that's what's going to happen. Because once the news or the financials come out in about three weeks, they are going to be reporting all of this money coming in. Now, I don't know how much of all of this they have. But when we look at the financials, you see that they have nothing, nothing annually. They have nothing quarterly. Any revenues is good. So if they can start bringing in millions of dollars as some down payment for all this stuff they're going to be doing, that is going to be excellent. That'll get the chart running. Now let's take a look at the balance sheet since we're here. Cash and cash in the bank. Don't forget those three zeros. We got 1.1 million. Total assets for the company is just under 10 million. Ah, liabilities just under 3 million. So we're actually doing good for a company that has no revenues. We are holding positive stockholder equity, we the investors, of just under 7 million. Pretty decent. Take a look at the relative volume for the company. Wow, what a drop. She's normally doing about 6 million shares a day as an average over the last 30 days. Today, she did just over a million. Now, I was looking over at Yahoo Finance, seeing what their volume was. It's been sporadic. It jumps up and down, but we can say this. Whenever news comes out, she jumps. Whenever a news press comes out about a contract or something, this stock jumps. She's been jumping lower and lower. Her highs have been getting lower and lower, but she has been spiking on the news. And I am expecting that where she sits now, the next piece of news or the financials could get this thing to be another massive spike. Two, three, four, five hundred percent gains. Taking a look now at the uh, share structure. Look at that. Outstanding share count is about 15, 16 million. Now, I don't know what the float is. It's not going to be higher than the outstanding share count. So the maximum our float is going to be is 15, 16 million. I'm happy with that if that's what it is. But chances are it's going to be a lot less because the insiders own some. But those aren't on the open market. So those have to be subtracted and our number is just going to be smaller. Disclosures. Probably went through these already. Just poking our heads in. 8Ks are quick. I look up here, there's our stockholder vote meeting. That's where I got all that information from. And then we got another 8K here. This one is the NASDAQ one. I just showed that to you too. Now, the other thing I want to share with you, how do I know when that financial's coming out? Well, I just scrolled on back until I found their last one. It says it came out um, on May 14th, and that was covering the period ended 331. So I figure 631 is the next quarter ended, and they have 45 days after that, it looks like, that they filed. So 45 days after uh, June 31st would put us mid-August. So that's how I'm figuring that's when our next financial is coming out, and I'm expecting it to be good, folks. I'm expecting there to be some revenues on there. I'm thinking it's going to be more than hundreds of thousands of dollars, and even if that was all they got, compared to zero, that's excellent. But if they actually come on with millions of dollars on the books and hopefully they're making profits, man, this chart is going to blast off. All right, let's go take a look at what I found. Now we get to do what I enjoy the most when it comes to due diligence and research, the charting. Folks, if there's anything you want to learn, learn charting. Anybody can read news. But let's be honest, the charts don't necessarily go along with the news. Many times we see good news come out and the chart falls. Or crazier yet, there's bad news and the stock is running. So it isn't about the news. It is about the technicals, reading the charts. I love playing with the charts. And this is my playground. This is Thinkorswim, my free trading platform. So we're going to chart ticker STSS, Sharps Technology, got her opened up to a six-month, four-hour view. She was in a downtrend here until all of this activity happened. And while she was falling, she was showing a lot of initiative, lots of strong pops coming through that 200-day SMA. And most of these big green spikes are between 30 and 50%. But every time she was smart enough to come back down under because it's too steep to be trying to break out. That's a slippery slope. 
You jump up there and stay up there too long, you're going to trip, fumble, and fall, and you're normally going to fall further than where you started. When she fell down, she came down to this support at about 26 cents, and as you can see, she's been bouncing off of this a lot. When she finally broke this, she fell down to her next strong support at 20 cents. This entire tower is sitting on top of that, and right now she is bouncing off of that. So these are two strong supports that we need to pay attention to. The other thing I've got drawn up here is a channel showing us that our highs were getting lower and lower, and a lot of them are touching right up to that channel right there. Now, all of this activity, this is from May 17th, to May 28th. This is when the FDA was putting out all those notices and she was coming to life. The 17th and the 18th, she had some bouncing going on. On the 23rd, she had a nice rip coming all the way down afterwards to this low of 17 cents. And that day, she jumped up to 84 cents. Now, this isn't a 52 week high, that's 90 cents. We were close. That is a 52 week low, 17 cents. Between the two, you got yourself a 500% rip. She came all the way back down to her 200-day SMA. Not all the way down here, up here. She hit that hard. Bounced off of it, went virtually back up to 84 cents. That is from 20, 31 cents up to 81. That's over 250% gains. This time when she fell, she broke through that 200 without slowing down, but she did land on that strong support. Off of that, she bounced, going from 25 cents up to 50 cents. So we have got a 100% run on that bounce. Coming back down, falling underneath that strong support, but still jumping. Maybe a piece of news came out this day, but you can see she had life. She is struggling to try to stay onto this strong support, but lost it and has fallen back down here to the 20. And right now, she is trying to get off of this strong support and out of that channel right there. All of our oscillators say she is working hard and she is working strong. Everything is pushing in the right direction right now. Now, in saying that, our SMAs are not. All of our SMAs are coming down, every single one of them. So it's going to take a real strong push here to break through. When she breaks through, we've got a low float. It's under 15 million right now. And if they do a reverse stock split, this is going to kick the price up eight times. And then we're going to have a super small float. I don't know if you want to wait for that or not, because she looks like she's setting up right now. All of our oscillators are climbing. And we have a setup here. My PPO is climbing. That's my percentage price oscillator. And my ADX, which I call trend continuation, is falling. This is all about straight lines. It doesn't matter if it's going up or down or sideways. You get a straight line for whatever trend is on the board. And when the trend changes, the line changes. And as long as these two are separating, guaranteed your stock is climbing. When either one of these change direction, it stopped climbing. It's not falling. It just isn't climbing anymore. I like to use these for an exit signal when I'm just waiting to get more gains and she stops climbing. I don't want her to fall. She stopped climbing. That's my signal. Bing, I am out. And our RSI is a bit cool. She is down here at 51. Now, something I wanted to share with you here. You see this yellow line I got here? That actually is a support resistance I use on the RSI. I've taken notice that every time she gets above this line right here, which is at 48, not that that matters because I'm just looking at the line. When she gets above that, she gets strength and she starts to climb. When she comes below it, she gets weak and starts to fall. So this helps me to make decisions as well. Let's come on down to that 20-day, one-hour view. So you get a better look at the channel. You can actually see we've got a wedge here, right? She's getting pinched in there right now. We had a high about uh, the third of this month at 35 cents. That was a nice jump from 23 to 35. That's a 30% jump. Coming down, banging her head over and over again. You can see that. Now, yes, she's banging her head again right now. Why is it different? Well, she's sitting on a very strong support that she doesn't go under and stay very long. This could be a place for her to bounce. We have our 50-day. That is now 
leveled off and starting to climb. Our 20 day is already starting to climb. I really like seeing that. And as soon as that 200 haul turns up, we're going to have all the strength we need here to break out and get not only out of the channel, but to get up on top of that 200 and hopefully jump on top of this strong support and rip. And all we need are the financials or even a press release where they tell us unaudited pre-financials and they give us a sneak preview of what's going on. This is ready to rip, folks. Our hourly oscillators are good. We have a crossover right now on our PPO, just like we do on our MACD. Both of them are climbing. RSI now is up at 57 on top of my support down here on my RSI. I'm liking that. Take a look at our, uh, let's go 15 minute. Easier to read, fewer bars, same sort of layout. Hey, we got a breakout going on right now. She's been in a downtrend. On this chart, the bar chart, this blue line doesn't lay out correctly because I laid it on the four hour. So it gets a little wonky when you get down to these five minute, 15 minute time frames. But in either case, we can see our price is now starting to break out. She was going sideways for three days and today she got up on top of that 200, dipped underneath it, and right now she is starting to climb with all of our SMAs getting ready to cross that 200. Our short time frame chart actually looks strong. And everything shows on our oscillators. It's all climbing at this very, very moment. I'm thinking this is a great time to get an entry position. Just my opinion. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not licensed. I'm just giving you my opinion, whatever that's worth. But I think this would be a good time to get some of what you want. We don't know what it's going to do. If it did fall back down to 17 cents, you could pick up more at a better price because I don't think she's going to stay down here. Once mid-August comes, wherever you've gotten in, I think we're going to have impressive financials and this thing is going to run. Not to mention any other news that comes out about any other contract that they've got. So it's really looking good to me. I don't know about the long term, folks. Things can change in a lot of ways when it comes to this sort of thing. But in the short run, I am liking STSS. But do some more research and due diligence of your own. You might find some hotter information than I shared with you. Never know. We do know this, though. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.